Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today's training is going to be on residential home gutters. So I have a gutter right there behind me, you can see in the picture. And so this is my my own home and I have uh, not worked on gutters before this project. So I've been living in this home for over seven years and, uh, and uh, the gutters were on the house and we had the house painted and then the painters uh, removed the gutters and then reinstalled the gutters and I really wasn't paying that much attention to it. But um, over time I could see how they weren't draining properly, there's sags and bows. This one here I haven't touched yet. There's two other gutters that I've already redone and I'll show you those in one second. So um, here in SoCal Quite honestly, I don't think it's quite as important because it doesn't rain that much here. And so SoCal. gutters are very important in order for you to have proper water management around your property. Um, so uh, two things that you want to be concerned about is your gutters and your grading of your property. Everything should be sloped away from the property. Um, the first, I think it's six feet, should be pitched away from the property with a slope of a, about three inches so this way the water is draining away from the foundation what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the water away from the foundation now in my case I don't even have a basement we just have slabs because in SoCal they don't basically build basements because of the earthquakes but in a lot of our other parts of the country you do have basements so you've got a below grade basement and you want that water and that water table around that that uh, basement to be pushed as far away from the basement as possible to prevent that water hydrostatic pressure from pushing water into the person's basement. So water management is very important, especially in homes that have basements. Now, um, so the gutter system should be collecting the the water from the roof, and and, and you should be taking it away. Uh, so I'll so this gutter here I'm gonna so these gutters like I said were already on the house I didn't purchase these gutters but what uh, I don't like the installation of the gutter and I'll show you that in detail in a second and what I don't like about it and what I'm doing about it in order to fix it so um, that's the premise of, of this so these gutters here are professional gutters they're the uh, five inch seamless gutters when it comes to gutters, if you go to the big box store, Home Depot is an example, and I don't even think they sell 5-inch gutters. I think they only sell 4-inch gutters. These numbers are highly critical because even though it's a 5-inch gutter, it's truly not a, like a 5-inch opening. And, I'll, and I've got my tape measure here, and, I, and I'll show you that in a second. So, uh, rem, you know, remember you're trying to get the water from the roof onto the gutter. And a lot of these gutters, the way, uh, and I just, you know, now that I'm in this project, all of a sudden I'm looking at every single gutter on all my neighbors as I'm walking around doing a neighborhood walk. And I, I would say 90% or a good 80% of the gutters that you see walking around the neighborhood are not installed properly. Um, yeah, just a high number of, of gutters are just simply not installed properly. And a lot of the gutter design, uh, uh, where they put it, depends upon how the roof is. I notice on the houses that have the Spanish-style clay roofs, where it has waves into it, the the gutter installer tried to put it up as high as possible be because of the way that the um, of the gutter design, it's like it sits really low. So as as long as the rain was like a lazy rain, it would drain into the gutter. But as soon as you get uh, uh, a pretty good rainfall then the, then it can go directly over the gutter and then onto the ground okay so uh, let's go into what I don't like about this gutter behind me and why I'm reinstalling it okay so just looking at the gutter what's happening is is that there's a bow in the middle so it has a total dead spot so I want a little bit of a better slope coming down towards where it's supposed to uh, through the drain pipe so it drains out. Before I started the project what I did was is my gutter uh, attaches with that elbow right there and it goes down there. I took a garden hose 
which is just right over here and I just took that garden hose and I put it directly down there to verify that that was open and free and clear and it was and I and it, it on my property um, I'm on a little bit of a hill so it, it actually discharges right about there on the other side of that wall going towards the sidewalk so I'm good to go once I'm done with everything uh, reinstalling that elbow into that opening there I'll clean that up a little bit because it's been beat up and now when it also comes to the gut let me show you something else alright so here is probably the biggest problem that I have the problem is is that when they built this house the fascia where the roof slopes down to is angled in and the so when you try to take the gutter and you just try to and what they do is they just use these large spikes right here uh, in order to to like uh, nail it in and, ha and hammer it in well the gutter because this has got an angle to it, it just kind of wants to naturally curve out this way now even though it's a five inch uh, and so and then so you come down this way and as you try to get a slope into this thing and you go down at the other end and you're trying to pitch it this way well you're now nailing in instead of nailing in to a section that's close up here you're down here bringing the gutter even further back giving you less surface area to look at now let me show you how much area you got right here and this is at the beginning not even at the end all right so this is what it looks like standing on top of the ladder here so the opening that we have here from the edge of the roof to here is just a little over two inches two and an eighth or two and a quarter now even though this is a what they call a five inch gutter measuring it from here to the edge here that's five inches you don't have five inches of opening if I take the tape measure and I put it up against the back of the gutter and come in like this you see that you actually got about four and a quarter and that's starting out with a five inch gutter if you were at the Home Depot and you got four inch gutters you could take another inch and go back off of that leaving you with practically no opening at all <laughs> you'd have a one inch opening here in order to try to collect the rain with this installation but we're going to change this installation anyways but having a five inch seamless gutter to start with is much better than the ten foot sections four inch gutters so um, this this going in this direction is a, is a good way to go uh, another thing I did was I'm getting rid of the the spike installation and I go with what they call the hidden hanger system so um, this gutter is the one that I need to completely take down and redo and let me show you what a finished product looks like alright this is on the other side of the house this is a finished gutter that I I've already completed and you can see what I've done on the fascia this here is the original fascia right here angled so I have basically have built it out so that it's flat right here giving the gutter a place to attach to I took the drip edge which is this metal right here and I just kinda of brought that out a little bit so as things come down if it hits the drip edge it drips directly into the gutter now this here is at the end of the run not even the beginning of the run and uh, let me show you how much uh, how much space I've got there from here to here and it's about four and a, a little over a half inch okay and you can see the hidden hanger system I got that all the way down so I don't have the spikes I got the hidden hanger system and now and, and I've got a good slope built into this here so that it completely comes out drains out and then comes in this case just comes out right there now let me show you over here this is what it looks like looking up up at the top so over here on the left hand side where is the furthest point away from the downspout I got it up here as close to the uh, right under the drip edge as humanly possible and then uh, as I come down uh, I increase my slope uh, towards the um, 
towards the drain pipe right there and and I've so it it uh, it does a really good job now over here this on my particular roof because it has this upper section that that when it rains it'll come down to this section so right here is where it's going to catch not only this this roof section here but also this upper roof section here so because that drains down to here comes over to here then it comes over to the drain pipe and then out so this area here was really critical in order to ca to capture it uh, but basically this is what a properly installed uh, gutter system this is what the other side is going to look like uh, when I'm done and basically the um, the magic here is building that out like that and making that so it comes down straight so that you have a place to catch the um, the gutter tube okay now we're coming into the backyard okay here is a large 50-foot gutter six system that I've already uh, reattached and, and put on and it has a large roof section right there that you can see so the original gutter again was I this is the part that I installed okay so I've put this uh, built out fascia we'll call it here bringing that out so the original fascia was here now originally what I was going to do was I was going to use these shims so I cut a whole bunch of shims right there and I put them on the uh, on the uh, the gutter and then I was going to attach it to there but with the shim process what happened was it really wasn't giving me the result that I wanted this was coming a little bit over here uh, further than what I wanted this system the one that you see here is really the the best way to go because it it gives you the, the the most surface area for the gutter to be supported onto and and how much it captures so I had to do that for the entire run this is the way that I was able to deal with this um, with with doing this gutter this is not supported right now but this is how I kinda uh, was able to hold it down and and uh, and to uh, build uh, to work with the gutter so uh, I wasn't like feeling stressed or anything so I I built the, this uh, shim system here to work with this angle's fascia I also got the same thing for the other side which I'll show you when I get into that that project but it, I just left these up just to show you that but this this gutter is already fully installed and uh, let's see if I can step back the sun's a little bad right here looking at it but anyways there's the uh, what it looks like coming all the way back so it's just a just a nice straight line pitched all the way towards now in this case it's such a long run I really should have had one downspout here and one downspout here but the but the the way that they did it and because this is a more of a walking path going across the house that way I kinda like it the way that it's set up where it just has the one downspout on this side but technically there's so much roof area and this is such a long distance it really should have been done in two but um, in this case I just left it the way that it was kind of set up for which is just one one side here going down leaving that side free of obstructions of trip hazards walking hazards because this is the side that we're always walking around the uh, although you can walk around the house this way we rarely do even though it's got a full path and everything like that uh, basically we use the other side oh so then on this downspout here what I did was originally what happened was is this came down and discharged right down there into the ground when I did my water test with that line right there that line is plugged and this house is 40 years old and um, and I wasn't about to try to figure out where that plug is or anything so instead of taking the water below ground which is preferred uh, and taking it out to the street uh, because there's a plug somewhere between here and the street I didn't feel like dealing with it I just um, took this elbow uh, purchased this elbow here and I had an extra piece of um, uh, gutter material right here uh, which I guess is uh, uh, 2 by 3 or 2 by 4 whatever it is 
Uh, it's a little short though. Really, I want it to be pitched away from the house like this here. And then, so I should have it land over here, but that's the only piece that I had right now. So I just left that there for now. But basically, the, uh, it's just going to, you know, go out this way and then towards the street that way. Uh, because I have a concrete walkway directly next to the house, and I even went in and um, put um, a sealant, probably polyurethane, in between that joint right there so that it's, um, you know, it's a pretty, it's a sealed joint. So there shouldn't be really any uh, irrigation wear, you know, a wearing away between that that joint between the cement and the foundation. So it's um, you know it's just going to go down here. This is part of the wood for the project that I'm going to work on, the one that I showed you. You can see I got that uh, that's all sealed up that joint right there with polyurethane um, sealant. Okay, so that's that and let's get into our project all right so basically i just kind of gave you the premise of what i'm starting with and what i'm going f from the what the gutter looks like before i touch it and then what it, the final product is going to look like after so um now i'm just going to go through and do this this uh this one small section that i have to do uh and just do do the whole thing so i'll just go through it start to finish. Uh, oh, tools needed for the project. Let me show you a couple tools that will make this easier. Alright, here's the shims that I made up for the gutter. I'm only going to need two of them uh, for the gutter that uh, I'm going to be working with to support it. Um, I have just a very DIY friendly, uh, inexpensive uh, Ryobi 10 inch table saw that you can change the angle on in order to get your angled cuts and we've got a chop saw here compound miter um, saw in order to uh, make cuts with the with the wood and everything like that all right I'm now getting set to uh, remove that uh, downspout right there so I got my ladder set up I brought my workbench over here and I got a couple of uh, tools I all right, so here's some tools. I'm going to use my uh, cordless drill with a uh, quarter-inch uh, nut driver, a uh, crowbar, uh, a metal working tool here, just a pair of uh, channel locks, hammer, and I got a couple of uh, clamps and a couple of um, angled uh, angled shim supports, I guess. Now these particular ones are cut for this uh, angle of fascia. These ones are, were cut for the, the ones in the backyard. Just to give you an example of the difference. Let's see here, with that there being totally flat and straight that way, you can see how much different different that is. Um, this angled fascia. So, so th if you have different angles, you need uh, different supports. This is perfectly cut for the for the one that we're dealing with. These ones here were for the backyard. Okay, um, that's it for that. Uh, first step is uh, remove that uh, that down. Next step is to pull out the metal spikes. So I'm going to use a crowbar and this just start here at the end. Basically, I just start at the back, try to get it right next to the metal, try to break that, that bond seal there, come here. This one's all jacked up, it's been really pounded on. with 
that down on the ground. Okay, the gutter is completely free now, and I'm going to put it onto the ground. Here we go.